Okay, so I was going to wait till I had a new cutting mat in tomorrow, um, but I'm too eager to get into this, so, yeah, um, I also tried, oh yeah, so, um, if you haven't seen part one, you can go check that out, basically, I picked up this Black Magic Pocket 6K on eBay as a broken, uh, not working, so for four parts unit. It uh, fell down, and so it seems to have yanked on the Mini XLR part a little bit too, actually, I just noticed that. Uh, but it fell here, cracked, doesn't turn on, doesn't react to being, uh, well, so I bought it and it didn't react to being plugged in with a battery. Nothing else um, was tested. I tested it with a little 2-pin, Weipu, Weipu, whatever you want to call it, uh, connector to D-tap. But I just ran off a of power supply. It drew seven milliamps or something like that. Wouldn't turn on, of course. There's no switch. Um, the sensor seems intact and like perfect. So my hope is that all I need to do is replace this button assembly and probably the new housing. There is a disassembly video that I'm following that I will link in the description uh, from someone who did a really great job. Basically, um, there's someone in the UK who makes kits for these cameras, for 6K and the 4K, so you can put them onto drones. And he actually has a spare 6K housing and a 4K housing, and he has button assemblies, so... Well, I was originally thinking I'll maybe just, like, rig up a toggle switch or something on this. Maybe I'll buy a whole new housing from him and whatnot. And yeah, it'll be the first proper camera I've had. It'll... Yeah, it's way overkill for what I need, but it'll be fucking awesome. Um, I also have a quote from Black Magic for a rough price of a new housing, which will be 300 from them. If it needs a new main board, that's 600 and some, and then at least 160 labor. Um, that's all US dollars. But if I can fix it myself, I will. So, we are going to start by getting the body off.
So here we have the actual LCD assembly. So that's the thing, like this is like <laughs> quite easy to get into, it's pretty nice. Black Magic won't sell me the parts to repair it, which is a bit of a shame. Oh. But, um, yeah, they will service it out of warranty. So the connector for the ribbon cables here is completely, or the, the function, so I believe this is the, the function keys and also the, um, also the power button. And those are just all just completely disconnected. And that is a, a ZIF connector, a zero insertion force work. You pry up the back, put it in, close it back up. But of course, I don't know what the situation is with the power switch. So, I do know what the situation is with there being some broken plastic. Nope, oh, there's some more. A little bit of rubber. Kind of a insulation material. There's some more of it. <laughs> it's funny, um, it's such an expensive thing, and you just shake it and more bits keep coming out. That seems to be all the bits, so the power button and whatnot, that's all gone. But to inspect this, I'm gonna have to really get in there. And I want an anti static bag to put that in too. So I'm gonna find an anti static bag before I keep going. Okay, yeah, DigiKey sent some film capacitors and an anti static bag for some reason. I believe we are completely free. Yeah, this is, ooh, this is bent, look at that. Interesting. That is definitely tilted up a little bit compared to the rest of the board and that kind of made this look like it was bent downwards. It looks pretty straight otherwise. Okay, and we can see here our... Oh, that was uh, a heat sink or something. Those two. Uh, that did need to come off, though. Okay. Um, our Type-C HDMI 3.5 mil jacks are built in, but our mini XLR and power ports are separate. So that bent uh, thing... Yeah, that's separate. That's good. And I... Or N183. Yeah, okay. Um, ooh, I can put some crown knot on there, though. I can... Or Thermal Grizzly, my... Uh, first, my network switch, my 10-gig network switch, I can put Thermal Grizzly on, and now I can put it on my Blackmagic camera, as long as this works. But yeah, that... Um, there's definitely a bit of a cattywampus band right there. So that's concerning. But... 
we're going to go ahead pop this into our anti-static bag. Close that up. So, what we're interested in is over here. Quite a bit, um, quite a bit of stuff in here, damn. Okay, so our DCN pops into this actual board here, and this is our power connector. And our fan runs off of that board as well, interesting. So there must be signaling back to run that. Oh! Oh, look at that, our flex PCB. There's a little booger on it. A little bit of damage right there. That should still work, but, um... Yeah, that's not good. So... How are they doing... Oh, is that how they're doing the... Okay, so... It looks like you can see in there. This might be difficult. There, you see that shiny little bit in there? In the back right there. Well shiny bit. It looks like there are copper pads there or well um gold uh you know pads on that flex PCB. Oh shit. And it looks like the slider switch probably had two springy metal contacts. So like on the inside of a multimeter, the big rotary switch has a like leaf springs made out of steel or something. Or like nickel coated steel. It looks like the slider switch on this also had that same mechanism. So when you pushed it in, it slid those. So it's not, uh, it's not like there's a mounted PCB or mounted flux PCB switch here that I can slide and turn on. But if I can get these out, if it's not a huge pain in the ass, which it looks like it is going to be, I should be able to solder to those, pull them out here, and hook them to a switch just to do a test on this. Because I'm going to have to replace this anyways, it looks like. I mean, it's got that little booger dangling off of it. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's how it's set up. So... How do I get this? Oh, I think I need to pull this whole metal frame out though, which means pulling the left microphone assembly out. Oh no, sorry, that's the left microphone. That's that's um that's the tally light assembly. That's really complex for the tally light. Flex PCB with like little maybe reinforcing bits on it. Man, flex PCB design is super cool. Um But I think I need to pull the whole guts out and possibly have an exposed sensor. Okay, so... Yeah, it looks like we just have to pull a bunch of stuff out. <laughs> so, I believe we also need to... I'm not too sure about this, it so makes sense though. Wow, is that welded? Fucking hell. Okay, check this out. That right there. The cutest teeny little tiny welds I've ever seen. Holy shit. Look at that. That's quarter 20 thread right there. Damn, dude. Okay, so we got those out.
Okay, I'm just gonna cut back and look at the video of the 4K again. It is a fair bit different from uh, what I don't think that part is in there. Um, and it's probably a bigger heatsink, but I'm just gonna go check that video for reference. So I just realized something while poking around at this some more. All those little horizontal lines there. I was like, oh, maybe they added a little more copper onto the flex PCB it's for like a reinforcement or something. No, that's shielding. So that little grid pattern you see horizontally across the metal three connectors, or the middle three lines, that must be EMI shielding to stop the mics from picking up noise. That's really cool. I haven't seen that before uh, on a flex PCB design. Usually it's just all sort of that thing, so very neat. And like nicely designed. I mean, that's something if I was designing this, I would probably miss that. And it looks like the microphones actually are on separate modules with a couple screws. Once I can figure out how to uh, pull this out. I sent a couple Facebook messages to Halo RC and we will uh, we will see what he says. Okay, well, I just gave this another little tug and it just popped out super easily somehow. Uh, so the heatsink there is pretty dang small. So that hopefully means now... I think the plastic on the back of that screw is catching it a little. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I think that was catching it. Shit, okay, so I am seeing a mark right there on the flex PCB. Okay, that is double sided. I don't know if that is on the same trace. A little bit of a a pinch there, and I'm really hoping that's not a uh, I'm really hoping that's just the coating looks a little messed up and nothing more. I believe this is a whole separate cable, so it would be replaceable, but yeah um. Yeah, that would hopefully uh, be broken through. So we have our heat sink out and our little main frame that is, wow, that is very rigid. Damn. Yeah, and there's little welds on there. Man, more of them here. Man, those are just fucking beautiful. Those welds are super impressive. All right. So, you can see here. Oop, oh, I guess I should have. There, so you can see those three contacts on the flex PCB. That is where the power switch is supposed to be. So, I've done a little more exploratory disassembly. Uh, I removed this. And I pulled out the button assembly, which, I mean, just the design of that flex PCB. Like, look at that. That's fucking gorgeous. Like, the actual design process for that. Damn. So, looking at 
the actual section that goes to the power switch here. It almost seems like there's only actually two traces connected, or two of these connected. I lay this on, right? Yeah. So it looks like this one and this one are connected. And this one right here might actually be completely disconnected. So I think that one's disconnected. Those two are connected. So I'm seeing like a gap around the via there, clearance for that. And then on this side, you can see two traces coming in. But nothing else around there. And that one doesn't lead anywhere. So I'm pretty sure it's just these front um it's just these these front ones basically. I will still connect onto that one since I have access to it. I'm pretty sure. We only need those couple, those two. So, I also found another piece of plastic. So that's nice. Also dropped my soldering iron. So that's nice. I did just happen to get a brand new tip for this thing. So good timing. Again, I'm quite sure that one does nothing. I just need to think about the orientation this thing's going to be in. Okay, so... Go ahead and shorten that a little. The nice thing, if this camera does work out, which I really fucking hope it does, is I'll be able to hook an HDMI monitor up and be able to look at what I'm doing while recording. Which they should toss that. Oh yeah, yellow I was going to make the maybe nothing anyways. So there's our maybe nothing. So red and black is what I'm going to connect and hope turns this thing on. Okay. Those all look good. No shorts. Let's go ahead and double check. I mean, maybe it's bent like that a bit to be... Like, for the shape, and it seems to sort of sit back in. Okay. But if it did impact hard enough to bend this, or even worse, bend that... I mean, fuck, how far did this thing fall from? Because this is... Like, that is, like, I'm going to need pliers to bend that back, if that is actually bent. 
That'd be an insane amount of bending. Um, but you never know, I guess, right? Uh, but if that is actually bent, that makes me a little nervous for the board. Okay, so it seems impossible to plug in this button assembly in place, so I've removed it. Um, and I don't know about hooking the screen up with that there, but I know that these will operate without um, without a screen uh, from like the drone people who run these without a screen and hot plug it, which uh, I don't think I would hot plug the screen. But I want to see, since I'm at this stage, if I get any measurable amount of power draw on this thing. I've wired up the red and black to a switch. So I've got my supply set to 12 volts, 2 amp current limited. A bit higher than I'd like, but I don't want to damage it from under amperage as well, which I hear is the thing. Oh shit, one amp draw, 1.2. Oh, the light's there. 1.2 amps of draw. Shit. Um, shit, I don't have an HDMI monitor, a tiny one. Okay. Yeah, 15 watts, 16 watts, which is right for idle from what I understand. 1.285 amps at 12.32 volts. Okay. Oh. Nervous still. One point three amps. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, um I need to pull the lens cover off. Which difficult in Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Okay, I need my lens. I need my lens. I need my lens. <laughs> Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Oh, the mics are working. Left side. Ah, uh, yeah. That's not really gonna work. Okay. Lens. I don't want to, uh, probably need more height here. Okay. Okay, we're set to... Close focus, 18 millimeters. <laughs> holy shit. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> God, my tongue's too dry, holy shit, it works. It fucking works. Oh my God. Oh, focus peaking is on, and zebra striping, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, dude, dude, I got a working, well, okay, this ain't exactly perfect, but I got a working Blackmagic Pocket 6K for 660 bucks, dude, 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 Dude! Oh, holy shit! Oh, I'm so fucking excited right now. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> oh, touch works. And it's accurate. Blackmagic Raw. 
Oh my god, set up. Um, I want to see the software version. Dude, 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 dude. Software 8.1. This has been, I don't know what the latest one is, but this must have been used pretty recently. Auto dim display. Oh, that's a telly light. Oh, you can change the Bluetooth name on these. Oh, maybe not. Turn Bluetooth on. Oh, I hope I can change the name on that. Dude, like, oh, it fucking works! It fucking works! Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit! Holy shit, how do I exit the menu? Um, I just want to see if the autofocus works. Manual focus. Yeah. Oh god. I think we can agree that's blurry. Oh wow, that is a noisy lens. Dude, autofocus works. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Dude. Dude. Oh, I don't have words. I don't have words. I've got me a black magic pocket 6k that's working and it just needs a couple parts and I need to grab an SSD to test but it's fucking working